Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is my walkthrough for the Sisters of EVE Level 1 Epic Arc, The Bloodstained Stars, Chapter 7, Closing In. I've already accepted the mission from Dovirch Anselm to return to Sister Alatura. I am already docked in Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of EVE Bureau, having traveled the 20-odd jumps to get back here. By the high security route, of course. I'm going to right-click Sister Alatura, start conversation. Uh, and this is a courier mission, which I can do in a shuttle. It'll be fastest in a shuttle. So I will set destination for Adoto and add Arnon as a waypoint. I will click accept. Uh, you know how to do a courier mission. I'm not going to bore you with that part. I'm going to switch to a shuttle for this. Make sure the cargo's on board. And I will undock and skip ahead in the video, that is. Alright, I've skipped ahead to where I have just docked up in Idoto 7 Moon 20, Bank of Luminaire Investment Bank. Right click Sister Altura, start conversation, uh, complete mission. And I request the next mission, and I have to go back to Arnon to do that. Um, by the way, uh, you may receive a notification saying I am in need of your services uh, player name for a very special mission. Uh, this is a storyline mission. It is not at all related to the Ep Sisters of Eve epic arc. For more information on storyline missions, um, please, uh, you can run a Google search on the term phrase storyline missions Eve Online, or you can consult my video on missions and standings. Uh, I am going to make the four jumps back to Arnon, so I will skip ahead again. I have skipped ahead to where I've made the four Stargate jumps back to Arnon. I'm docking up, and I'm going to request the next mission. Right click Sister Alatura, start conversation. She wants you to take Tahaki Karen to the Society of Conscious Thought Luxury Space Liner. Alright, so let's click accept. Let's click close. Make sure Tahaki Karen is in your cargo hold. And undock. A shuttle will suffice. Although this is technically to win a mission space, uh, there is no ambush as part of this mission. Alright, left click the space liner and click open cargo. <clears throat> it will be a mission container on your overview. And of course, you will need your cargo hold open. A frigate with an afterburner will go faster than your sh than a shuttle but a shuttle will go about as fast as your destroyer with an afterburner. So once the floating cargo opens, put Tahaki Karen in, and then double left click away. And it will change into a red plus sign for a pleasure cruiser. Uh, if you're doing this in a combat ship, do not shoot the pleasure cruiser. Republic Intelligence tells me you might have a lead on our prodigal son, Dagan. He needs to be taken down for everyone's good. The Republic will watch your back. Let's dock up. Drive 
Now, on my way from uh, Tanu back to Arnon, I made a stop over in Dodixie and some of the surrounding systems, and I purchased a new ship, a Vexor type Galente cruiser, because I'm expecting the last few mission, uh, the last two combat missions. Well, I guess the last two or three combat missions to be particularly difficult. I don't know if my destroyer is up to it. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. But before I go into the cruiser, uh, let me start a conversation with Sister Altura. Complete the mission and request the next mission. Now, we need to destroy the society spy, so let's click accept, and close, and let me switch into my Vexor and I will show you what I fit to this thing. Um, all of these modules that you see may or you may or may not be able to fit it depending upon what your skills are. Uh, for reference, uh, these are the skills that I've trained most recently. And you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to take a look at the list a little more closely. Um, I have, in particular, Electronics 4 and Engineering 4, which provides me with the CPU and the power grid that I need to put uh, all of this together. So I have a quartet of 200mm railgun ones, currently loaded with lead charges, but I also got antimatter and iron. These are cruiser size weapons. They need the cruiser size ammunition. So the small charges I was hauling around on my destroyer won't fit in this thing. I've got a 10 mega newton afterburner one. This is a cruiser size afterburner. The frigate size afterburner will not suffice. Don't try to use your one mega newton afterburner on here. It's going to be near useless. The I have a pair of cat recharger ones. I've got a medium armor repairer one. Uh, I have a power diagnostic system one because I need the extra power grid. And but the power diagnostic system also provides some benefits to the capacitor. Uh, the I have also got a couple of armor hardeners. I actually bought four of them, one of each type. EM, thermic, explosive, and kinetic. And actually, for what I think I'm going up against, I want explosive and kinetic. For drones, I got... I have drones level 4 on this character right now, so I can only control four drones at a time. So I got four medium galente, four light galente, uh, four medium minmitar, and four light minmitar. They are the Hammerhead, the Hobgoblin, the Valkyr, and the Warrior, respectively. For this mission, I think I'm going to want to do explosive damage, so I will have the Warriors and Valkyrs in here. I'll keep the Hammerheads in as well, since I've got space for it. Uh, Alright, I'm going to close my cargo hold. I think I am all set. So, I will undock. Right click at empty space, sealing the deal, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. Now, if I open up my fitting window, my resistances on my armor layer are shown in the middle bar. My armor only takes half damage from electromagnetic. It'll take 65% damage from thermal, 64% uh, damage from kinetic, and 89% damage from explosive. So if somebody throws 100 EM at me, I take 50 points of damage on the armor. If they throw 100 explosive at me, I take 89 points of damage. But if I turn on the armor kinetic and armor explosive hardeners that increases my kinetic and explosive resistances now it's time to start shooting things and you know what there's one thing I forgot to do right click warrior one move drone light min metar You know what? 
these I sh probably should have used the hobgoblins here, but anyway. Let me start shooting things. Right click the hammerhead, new group, medium, galente. Right click the Valkyrs, new group, medium, minmitar. Alright, let's see how well my medium galente. Because these look like Galente-themed ships, which suggests I really should be doing kinetic thermal damage. I may have picked the wrong weapons for this. So my onboard guns... You'll notice that I'm using my guns to shoot distant frigates. There's a reason for that. Uh, my guns have a tracking speed of 0 0.032 radians per second, but that's against a cruiser-sized target. Against a frigate... They're only good to about 0 0.011. Yeah, I'm thinking I should have used kinetic and thermal instead of kinetic and explosive. Well, at least one of my tanked damage types is correct. Let me keep the Society Spy at range, 30 kilometers, because I'm no longer able to track him. And I will activate my Afterburner and my Armor Repair. I'm also, of course, keeping an eye on my Overview just in case there are Warp Scramblers, but I don't see any right now. I can turn off the afterburner and medium armor repair now. Good condition. I'll have my drones finish off that society spy and see if my guns can hit that last frigate. Not too bad. My angular velocity against the frigate is 0 0.005. Well, now it's getting hard to hit. Alright, they're all dead. Save location. Abandon all wrecks, and let's dock up. Turn off the afterburner and patch up my armor. I am Andani Youssef from Ishikon Internal Security. We've been monitoring data traffic between you and the Servant Sisters of Eve. No, don't get excited. We're all on the same side here. The state will help you get Dagon, as long as you hand him over to us once you've got him. I'm going to reload my guns. Alright, they finished reloading, just Docking in time to dock. Requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, let's start a conversation. Complete the mission and request the next mission. Uh, eliminate the squadron and bring Crits and Parthus back for interrogation. He will be flying at a Marian battlecruiser. If possible, you want to be doing EM thermal damage. You also want to be tanked against EM thermal damage. Uh, his damage output is serious enough that you do need to keep the damage types in mind. So. I don't need the explosive or kinetic hardeners. I will put in the EM and thermic hardeners. Uh, 
I don't want the warriors for this, I want the hobgoblins in case I need to put out light drones. But I expect to use hammerheads. Alright, everything looks okay. I'm going to undock. Now, from what I've read on eve-survival.org, Crits and Parthis do also does energy neutralization, or energy vampiring, out to about 20 kilometers, meaning he can drain your capacitor. You know, the capacitor that your afterburner needs, that your medium armor repair needs, that um, your armor hardeners need, that your guns need, unless you're Minimitar and you're using projectiles, well, or just projectiles, flat. If you're just using projectiles, you don't need the capacitor for the projectiles. But everything else, yeah. Uh, if you don't have enough capacitors, uh, you can't operate certain kinds of modules. If you're using lasers because you want to do EM thermal damage, your lasers might not have enough capacitor. So, you probably want to keep a close eye on your managing your capacitor. If you're going to be within 20 kilometers, I'm going to see if I can attack this guy from beyond that. And I forgot to turn on my hardeners. Now would be a good time to do that. And Crits and Parthus is indeed trying to cap neutralize me. Set my default orbit distance to 25,000 meters, and I will orbit Crits and Parthus. And let me put out... Oh, by the way, the reason I group these things, I can right-click a header and select Launch Drones. more frigates. Group the hobgoblins, fight Galente. Really, really, really. Oh, is this guy still? All right, I'm gonna align to something. I don't like how this is going. I have to be careful with my drones, uh, because if a new if new enemies show up and they start shooting my drones, they're really shooting my flying guns. I don't want them to do that.
All right. Maybe I know I can deal with this guy without any distractions. Optimal 20 kilometers, fall off 10 kilometers. And I am keeping him under my tracking speed. Alright. Alright. His energy neutralization range is definitely more than 20 kilometers. I all right, my capacitor is very low. Your capacitor recharges fastest at 25%. This is an important number to know. Below 25%, its recharge rate starts slowing down. This is not a good situation right now. I'm waiting for my drones to return. I'm going to have to make another pass at this guy. But for now, I'm going to dock up. So yeah, I don't think the trying to keep range strategy is working. He can move 350 meters per second. Then again, I was having capacitor issues because I was way too close to begin with. So maybe this will work. You know what? I'm going to take another pass at him just with this setup. He's got to have an outer range on his um, on his energy neutralization abilities. Yeah, somebody's fighting out here. And I will switch to iron charges for this. Select a default, keep at range of 40 kilometers. I may need to get a little bit closer because my drones can only be told to attack things 
that are only oh so far out. 20 kilometers plus 5 kilometers for each level of scout drone operation, plus 3 kilometers per level of electronic warfare drone interfacing. So right now my drone control range is 35 kilometers. Fire, tell the drones to attack. Now I will issue the keep at range command. I just have to be within 35 kilometers to tell the drones to attack. Now, he's using another ability on me called Tracking Disrupting, which is basically interfering with my guns. Let me pull up my log, see how much damage I'm doing. Accuracy is still 10 kilometers and optimal of 31, so as long as I keep him at 40 kilometers, I can hit him. Half the time. I'm using something called the Directional Scanner to see if any players are trying to use Combat Scanner probes. Uh, I don't see any within the maximum range of the Directional Scanner. So I should be okay. If somebody were to put out Combat Scanner probes and find my location and warp to me, they could try destroying Crits and Parthus and then swiping him for themselves and then demand my entire wallet as ransom. So right now I'm looking for anything with the name of Scanner Probe. Because I'm going to be sitting here for a while. But otherwise this strategy seems to be working. Uh, Crits and Parthus is not able to energy neutralize me at... Uh, 40 kilometers. Alright, there we go. I'm gonna pull in the drones and approach that cargo container. That's an MR citizen you've kidnapped, pilot, but if I understand your motives correctly, we can overlook that. Once you've extracted Dagon's location, we'll help you bring the Hammer of God down on him. Right now I'm quickly covering the distance to that cargo container as fast as I can and hoping that um, no other player has already scanned down my location. Because if they have, they could very well be sitting cloaked on grid right now without me ever seeing them. I think I will switch to antimatter.
Alright. Loot all. Good. Might as well swipe the loot off his ship as well. Uh, I'm going to save this location in case I want to come back and salvage later. By the way, I have been doing a fair bit of salvaging in between uh, recordings. Let me dock up while I'm talking. I've been doing all of salvaging and looting uh, afterwards in between recordings, and I've been selling that off. I have not been receiving any form of outside assistance whatsoever, and um, right now my wallet is 11.5 million. Probably a fair bit of this, if I take a look at my wallet. Probably a fair bit of this comes from selling off the loot that I have. Or selling off the minerals that I reprocessed some of the loot into. Alright. Start conversation with Sister Alatura. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Uh, you need to choose one of the four commanders here. It doesn't really matter which one. Contrary to some earlier reports, it does not affect what Dagon is tanked against. I am just going to go with the Galente Commander, uh, but you can pick whichever one. It doesn't even have to be the race of your birth. So, the Galente Commander, right-click, set destination. I will accept this choice, and I will close. Dagon is going to be doing explosive kinetic damage. So I'm going to make sure I am tanked for explosive kinetic. Alright. Uh, let me open my drone bay. I don't want the hobgoblins for this. I want the warriors. But the Valkyrs will probably be doing most of the work. Alright, I am going to undock and then make the four Stargate jumps to Sheru. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to skip ahead. Alright. I've skipped ahead to where I've arrived in Sheru. I'm going to right click. Uh, Alright. You can right-click, go to the Galente Commander, Objective, and Warped Location, or you can just left-click the Bruce Coltern Beacon and warp to that instead. Either works. Alright, left click Bruce Coltern, start conversation. Let me stop my ship, I don't know why I'm moving. Our man Dagon, destroy Dagon's ship and bring him back to your agent. Click accept. Right click the link, warp to location. Warp drive active. I should turn on my kinetic and explosive hardeners. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Alright. Start target locking the nearest hostiles. And open fire. And I should probably deploy my warriors. I'm going to eliminate the escort first. Uh, 
And I'm just keeping an eye on my directional scanner again. Alright. Next target. Well, that's right, I switched to antimatter. That's why my range is short, so short. Actually, I may have better luck with this if I send out the Valkyrs. trying a reverse kiting technique here. Hold on, that escort... I have that escort's attention now. I get rid of him. Basically, Dagan is trying to get away from me to get out to his preferred orbit distance, but since I keep closing the range, his first priority is trying to reopen the distance. So he's moving away from me in a straight line. got him at less than optimal and zero angular velocity, so my shots will always hit. Now it's just a question of whether or not I can break this guy's silly shield tank. Right. Um, so.
I probably don't need the afterburner quite so much. If I can get next to Dagan in the first place. But I can't break his tank. Alright, I'm gonna dock up while I think of another strategy for this. Alright, I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where I've finished refitting my ship with new modules and returned to the Sheru solar system. I had to go out several jumps to get these new modules. I've dropped my railguns and put on a quartet of heavy ion blaster ones. These are short range cruiser sized guns. Um, they have an optimal of 1375 meters. Uh, tracking speed of 0.1452 radians per second. I've also dropped the power diagnostic system for my low slots and swapped it for a capacitor power relay. Uh, with the new modules, I don't need as much power grid, and uh, but the capacitor power relay gives more benefit for my capacitor regeneration. All right, I am approaching Dagon and also keeping an eye on my directional scanner. And I am approaching with my afterburner on. And let me get ready with the drones. Target lock Dagon. And he is target painting me. That's another type of ability. Uh, target painting meaning that he's increasing... That's not the, the, not the market. Here we go. Uh, he's increasing my signature radius. It's now 300 meters, which makes me almost the size of a battle cruiser rather than a typical 120 meter cruiser. All right, I am within 25 kilometers. Uh, let me launch my Valkyries. Uh, now I'll close the distance a bit more first. All right, here we go. And send the Valkyries to attack. And I will use the same reverse kiting technique as before, only I'm going to get a lot closer. And... Almost in position. Good. Alright, now let's see how long it takes to break his tank.
Yeah, I think I'm breaking Dagon's tank. Barely. The range slip open a bit. I'm no longer in optimal. Let me fix that with one pulse of the afterburner. I gotta keep in mind that for my blasters, I've got an accuracy fall off of 4 kilometers and an optimal of 1.375 kilometers. So as long as I've got them at less than 1375 meters, I've, uh, and I'm keeping the angular velocity low like this, I'm guaranteed to hit. But I do have to watch the range. I just did a tiny sliver of armor damage to him. This is like watching paint dry. Violently. Right, his silly shield tank is finally down. If I train drones to level 5 and then drone interfacing to level 3, I'd have 5 hammerheads out, but they'd be doing the damage of about 8 hammerheads. Or, I'm sorry, I'd have 5 Valkyrs out, but they'd be doing the damage of 8 Valkyrs. Finally. Let's get him on board before anything else happens. Abandon all nearby wrecks, and let's warp to Bruce Coltern at zero. And I emptied 90% of the magazine here. Started off with 120 charges per gun, I was down to 12 by the time that was over. If I had to stop and wait five seconds to reload, he'd probably have that sh silly shield tank right back up again. So yeah, as you can see, this is where a lot, either here or Crits and Parthis, is where a lot of new players have to ask for help uh, to complete the Sisters of Eve epic arc. I believe CCP may have deliberately designed it like that, so that you have to start interacting with the rest of the player base. But of course, trust is a very valuable commodity in EVE. You have to decide very, very carefully who you trust. Um, now, I am biased. 
generally you can trust members of Eve University. If a member of Eve University uh, holds uh, swipes Dagon from you and holds him hostage, that's a that's a violation of the university's rules. It's not a violation of the game's rules, but it is a violation of the university's rules, and the university will expel that member. That person's not going to be a member of Eve University for much longer. So let's start conversation with Brute Skulltern, and let's finally complete this mission. This silly, silly, silly mission. Let's request the next mission. All right. Deliver Dagon to the waiting Wreath Class Industrial. He will be respawned back into your cargo hold. Click Accept. And right click Shiru and warp to location. Warp drive active. Dal Segno Alfine. The hard part is over. This is just a drop off. No combat involved. But whatever you do. Do. Not. Shoot. Anything. Now, if you're still having trouble killing Dagon with... Uh, destroying Dagon's ship in the previous mission with whatever setup you had... Um... Drones 5 would definitely have helped in my case, but a little bit of extra skill training might help with whatever it is that your approach is. <clears throat> Let's activate the acceleration gate. Warp drive active. Uh, if you need to do more damage, you can always go into the gunnery category and um, train up rapid firing to higher levels. Medium hybrid turret or medium whatever turret to higher levels. The missile launcher category has similar skills for missiles. Hello, old friend. Simply deposit Dagon into the Wreath Prison Transport and your long journey will be at an end. No matter what you see, I must ask you to stay calm and do not fire. And that is a drone structure. Dominix and Armageddon, a Tempest, a Raven. Uh, I'm gonna cut the afterburner. All right, full stop. And say bye bye to Dagon. Dagon lies imprisoned within his pod. Distorted through the glass, you can see impressive, impressive chiseled features contorted in impotent rage. He knows he is at your mercy, and has every reason to fear the mercy of a capsule pilot. And I think the drone structure is gone. I told you you had nothing to fear, pilot. Thanks to your help, the rogue drones need no longer be a hindrance to our efforts. Return to your commander and tell him Dagon will no longer trouble the empires. Farewell. Perhaps there is hope for your kind yet. All right. Warp to Bruce Coltern at zero. Warp drive. So yeah, if you're having trouble putting out enough damage by yourself and you don't want to ask somebody else for help because you're paranoid of everybody else, um, there are skills you can train. If you're using a missile-based boat, you can train up uh, the uh, higher levels of whatever missile skill you're using. 
Let me see. Missile bombardment. No, that's to increase range. Projection also deals with range. Rapid launch. Rapid launch will increase your damage per second. Uh, higher skill levels in whatever we particular missile you're using will increase the damage. Uh, let's see. You can browse through the skills in the missile launcher or gunnery or drones category, whatever your type of weapon system is. For gunnery, you can go for rapid firing, uh, surgical strike, medium, whatever turret that you are using. Ah, there's surgical strike. It has a prerequisite of gunnery 4. If you're using primarily a drone-based boat, uh, then really you want drones level 5, uh, drone interfacing 3, and if you're using light or medium drones, uh, you should uh, be training... I think it's combat drone operation. Yes. Combat drone operation to higher levels. That will also help. But, uh, let's talk to Bruce Coltern. We complete the mission, and the Sisters of Eve epic arc is complete. And that is the Sisters of Eve level 1 epic arc, the Bloodstained Stars. Thank you for watching.